Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, where we look into the microcosmos of instant pets. Today we'll be taking a close look at the life cycle and biology of Artemia under the microscope. You might know these guys as sea monkeys. They're a species of brine shrimp that have been sold in small kits since the 1950s. They're usually marketed as an easy option as a first pet for children, and also a tool to help teach them some basic biology. Large quantities of brine shrimp eggs are also commonly sold to aquarium owners who hatch them en masse as a live food source for their fish. What's really unique about these small crustaceans though, is that they're capable of something called cryptobiosis. It's the ability for their eggs to remain biologically dormant for decades when in a dehydrated state. And it's only once the eggs are then rehydrated that they'll incredibly come back to life and the baby brine shrimp will emerge. The first larval stage of the brine shrimp is known as a norpleus, and during their journey to adulthood, they'll become 20 times longer and their mass will increase by an astonishing 500 times. Adult brine shrimp are still very small though, the largest ones being only about 2 cm long, so to really appreciate the fine detail of their biology, it's best to view them with both macro lenses and a microscope to get a proper view. So today I'll show you a time lapse of this incredible growth, from the egg-like cyst all the way through to adulthood. Here's a view of the eggs. They look like small specks of dust to the eye because each egg is less than half a millimetre in size. So let's put them under the microscope to get a closer look. The spherical shape now becomes clear, and we can see that they're a dark brown colour. This is caused by a chlorine coating that encases the egg, and protects the dormant norpleus inside. Once immersed in warm salt water though, over a period of 24 to 48 hours, the egg begins to crack open, and the baby brine shrimp starts to emerge. This period is known as the umbrella stage, during which they're surrounded by a protein membrane that takes a few hours for them to eventually break through before they begin swimming for the first time. Brine shrimp norpli are almost invisible to the eye when they first hatch, but if you look carefully, they can be seen swimming in a jerky motion. They also have a strong affinity for light at this stage, and will usually swim directly towards it. Under the microscope, we can get a clear picture of what the embryo looks like. They're quite round in shape, with two enlarged antennae on their head that are the primary appendages used for swimming. You'll also notice a single red dot in the middle of the head. This is a simple eye, and it's the only one they're born with. It's unlikely to produce clear vision, but rather it's just used to identify areas of bright light. Their bodies are orange in colour because they're born with a protein and fat-rich yolk-like substance in their gut, which sustains them for their first few days of life. This yolk is necessary, as their digestive tract isn't fully formed yet, so they're unable to eat and digest food from their environment. It only takes around 8 hours before they molt into their second larval stage. On the second day, we can already see some clear changes and signs of this growth. When looking at them in the tank, they still look exactly the same, but at 100 times optical zoom on the microscope, we can clearly see the development going on. The Norpley's body has begun to lengthen out, and those swimming antennae have grown larger too. They're still feeding on orange yolk at this stage though, so when raising them at home, it's still not necessary to feed them quite yet. On the third day they've grown longer again, but now we can also see that ridges have begun to appear along the brine shrimp's thorax. This is the first sign that they'll be developing new legs. They'll eventually have 11 pairs which are called thoracopods. The word is of Greek origin, meaning legs that originate from the thorax. At day 4 the thoracopods have become a little longer, and we can see them beginning to move on their own. At this stage, baby Artemia can begin feeding from their environment. In nature, they eat live microalgae, and this is definitely the best food source for them. But as filter feeders, they'll eat anything small enough to fit in their mouths, so dried algae such as spirulina powder is a good option too. Because the body of Artemia is transparent, their digestive tract will be the colour of whatever food they ingest. Most live algae sources will turn them green like you can see here while some dried algae, such as that of Hematococcus pluvialis, which contains the creatinoid astaxanthin, will turn them a red or orange colour. By the fifth day, we can see something peculiar happening. Two additional compound dyes have appeared on the sides of their head. These will eventually be supported by a pair of flexible stalks, and become the adult brine shrimp's primary optical sensory organ. On day six, the development of their new legs is almost complete. They're now similar to the ones we see on fully grown adults, and they've also replaced those frontal head antennae as the brine shrimp's means of swimming propulsion. When we observe them in the tank, they no longer move about in a jerky motion, but now swim much more elegantly through the water. One week after hatching, an Artemia have become teenagers. By this stage they've shed the exoskeleton several times, and now resemble a smaller version of the adults. To be honest, they're almost too large to look at with a microscope now, so using a macro lens works equally as well. From here the Artemia will continue to grow, and different sexual characteristics of the two genders will become apparent. The frontal antennae on the male's head will enlarge significantly, as they'll be used for clasping the female while mating. Meanwhile, females will develop an egg sac at the base of their abdomen. Brine shrimp are capable of both sexual and parthenogenetic reproduction, meaning that if a male isn't present, a female is still able to produce eggs. 
But if mature males are around, they'll use their clasping antennae to grab onto the female and they'll swim around together mating as a pair from anywhere from a few hours to a few days. Females can produce hundreds of eggs each week and she'll continue to do so until the end of her life at around 4 months old. In ideal environmental conditions, she'll birth live young, but if the water salinity or temperature isn't quite right, she'll instead produce biologically inactive eggs that have a thick brown corian coating which will need to be dried out and then rehydrated again to hatch. The cycle will then begin again, as it has done for over 5 million years. Thank you for coming on this journey into the microcosmos of sea monkeys with me. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, and what you'd like to see on my channel next. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.